on the line, I have the original king of pop, pop lock and legend, singer, producer, songwriter, all of the above, ladies and gentlemen, Anthony, A.K. King. How are you, man? Greetings, brother Arnold. Thank all you right. for having me. Yeah, thank you for coming on the show. I'm really looking forward to this. I appreciate the warm introduction. Yes, yes. You've been mentioned on my show a couple of times. We recently had Cool Boy on, and he had some really good things to say about you. I got a chance to research your history. I got some cool questions, so let's do this. Hi. <laughs> so um, I, I kind of want to talk about popping first before we get into your life and then things like that um, to give the audience an idea you know, of pop, you know, the lifestyle that you, um, that you fell in love with in the beginning. I am from Southern California. Boogaloo Sam and his brother Pete are from Northern California. Mm -hmm. Pete being from Fresno. Um, us being, me being specifically from Compton, California, mm -hmm. we pride ourselves in the title of pop locking. And since the electric boogaloos don't even claim that as a title, we in the Southland claim the term pop locking. Now, and of course, in all similarity, popping and pop locking look alike. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there could be an argument about various styles and, and whatnot. But we, we we from the Southland, specifically from Compton, uh, we claim pop lock in L.A., of course, you know, but the Southland is a, um, is a term where pop locking comes from. Gotcha. The influence that Sam and Pete have on me, um, um, I've known Pete since 1979 when he moved to Long Beach. I was in Compton. He had influence on a couple of guys that, and you know that they're neighboring cities because you're from yeah. Compton too, right, brother? Long Beach, but yeah, Comp spent a lot of time in Compton as well. Right, so you know, so right, we're, we're neighbors. Yep. So, you know, Pete being from... Long Beach, a couple of cats from Long Beach went to my high school, which is Dominguez High School. Yep. And um, we just saw these just moves, just these little popping moves. We were already locking, which is why we just kind of just rolled over the term because we were migrating us from the Southland and prided ourselves in being lockers. Transitioning over from that terminology or from that movement into a pop movement, we kept the term. Okay. Um, that's where the influence of Pete and I migrate together. Um, we happen to know each other because his wife and I have known each other since the fourth grade. Um, we grew up together. So when I met Pete, Pete would come up to my high school and uh, Skeeter Rabbit, I'm sure you've heard of yep. at the time. He was not an electric boogaloo at the time, but he and Pete were really building their bond together at that time. And he was my main rival. We loved each other as brothers, but we loved getting on the dance floor, going at each other, sharpening uh, steel, sharpening steel. And we would go at each other all night long. So the relationships are very close. I think if there's any um, variation of idea of the dance, it's where those from the Bay, you know, um, keep the term popping, where us in the Southland, we pride ourselves in the term pop locking. But gotcha. the relationships are there. Gotcha, gotcha. Thanks for breaking that down, my man. So, um, shit, 70s and 80s, uh, City of Compton. It was, it, was a, it was a different time, you know, until sadly certain uh, elements entered our, our neighborhood. But um, talk to me about what it was like growing up in the 70s, 80s. Uh, you, you were born in 62, I believe. So, yeah, 60s, 70s, 80s in, in Compton. Yeah, so, you know, uh, being born in 62 in 75, that makes me 13, 14. So I'm a teenager. Mm -hmm. You know, in 75, 76, when arguably some of the best music, uh, soul music for sure, mm -hmm. um, was ever recorded, ever. Arguably the greatest year ever for soul music to be recorded, 
76. You know, what's going on album, the, the list goes on. So that time, especially being a teenager, was very, very impactful. It was very soulful. Um, it was more of a natural time. What really threw us off being from Compton, when we moved to Compton in 60, no, I was six. Yeah, we moved there in 68. Because you were born Com- in France, right? Yes, I was born in, wow, look at you, Brother Arnold. I doing my your homework. <laughs> look at you. I was born in Evreux, France. I bet you don't know what time I was born. That I don't know, my man, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 1 a.m. in Europe, yes. I was, uh, my father was in the, uh, the army. So I do have a dual citizenship. Okay. You know, so around that time, you know, 68, you know, I'm six years old. Compton is white. And for those that know the history of Compton, you know, the Watts riot, the Watts riot come up and yeah. blacks are migrating towards Compton, which is then a cow town. Mm-hmm. Before you know it, it's a cow town that goes from soul to gangs to drugs to it's like we've been infiltrated mm-hmm. and just seemingly out of nowhere you know we're overwhelmed with you know violence and and and, and all type of uh behaviors that we from that generation didn't grow up with but it did. you know looking back in hindsight seemingly was imposed upon us and of course dance wasn't new dance wasn't new but it's something that made pop and slash pop lock and unique, especially around 1979 in the Southland. I'm in the 11th grade going to Dominguez High. Mm-hmm. Dominguez High is right in the heart of Pyrus and Crips. Yep. One side enters in one uh, side of the gate, the others enter on the other side of the gate. You know it. If you're on the Crips side, you come through the laundry gate. There it is. You on the Pyru side, you come through the Compton Boulevard gate. Yep. And Brother Arnold, I'm sure, you know, you can see, looking back in hindsight, too, the design for these young black men to destroy each other. Yeah. Because it was inevitable. I mean, you know what's going on, and, you know, you, you, you put these guys in the heart of where their youth would probably override any maturity or wisdom that they could possibly have and the results were imminent which is what Compton has built its reputation on a lot of more more so than crime murder yeah killing gangster shit yeah you know so pop locking especially for us and I was a guy I could fight I grew up taking martial arts because I was a boy that grew up Roosevelt Elementary School getting beat up by the boys from Whaley. <laughs> you know, and junior high was a big thing when you're in elementary. I mean, these, some of these guys had mustaches and beards and mm-hmm. had deep voices. And, you know, and, and when you got this kind of, you know, the leather coat thing and everybody trying to be tough and, you know, I'm a kid, I'm, I'm afraid. Mm-hmm. You know, so a couple of times getting beat up and taking get me your lunch money taken and you know if you're from Compton what you're gonna learn is this a hey, cat you're gonna have to fight mm-hmm. oh yeah you know that that if you want to live you want you, you got to fight you don't have to be mean you don't have to be a gangster but you gonna have to fight if you're gonna protect yourself so um, along with already being a dancer martial arts became interesting to me and I became very good at it and I learned very early, you know, when I first started taking martial arts, you know, I just wanted to defend myself and fight like any other young kid. But I learned very early from my teacher that it was really more about discipline and thinking and being able to control myself, which further appealed to me. Because when you're young, if you got some drive and some motivation, you can take that energy and do something positive. And fortunately, I had that and uh, converted into being a phenomenal, phenomenal dancer because of the, first of all, the natural gift, rhythm, you know, being a musician, and and then just 
the art of being disciplined with my body, which popping really is. The reason that became important, Brother Arnold, mm -hmm. is because you know there's a lot of dances, and dance has always been attractive, but very few dances that you can mention have stopped traffic. Very true. Because there's something about that hit. Uh, uh, uh. Mm -hmm. And when you got it and it looks good and neat and tight, what it is is a demonstration of your ability to recognize frequency. You know, that wall. How does he do that? Where's that hit? How do you move? How do you know? So. What's so awesome about it is the ability to control and compartmentalize your body. And it was at a time where we were fighting each other and killing each other, bro. Mm -hmm. So that, that, uh, that intention, that, uh, replaced me having to physically hit you. Yeah, yeah. Tick a lot kind of broke that down. Um, he said that the harder you hit, it was kind of an extension of gang culture, right? Because, the, and look at the pop lock culture. We got the jackets with the letters and the, the, and the name. And the... You know, we in groups, so, you know, we, we've we got the, uh, the grouping parts together. You know, the mm -hmm. affiliation, the oneness, the community, um, the I'm better than you, that I can take you down. You know, my crew is better than your crew. And you mean to tell me that we found a way on our own? Come on, Pop Lockers. Mm -hmm. We found a way on our own. Not through going to jail. Not through lecturing and counseling. Not through law being imposed on us, Brother Arnold. Mm -hmm. But through our own culture, we found a way to remedy our own issue no wonder 40 years later this art form is all over the world and it'll never die yeah. and here's why one thing I expressed to cool boy who let me say this to all the listeners when this man by the time he, you know cool boy is uh, probably about seven years younger than me mm -hmm. but I love this man dearly he reached out to me for two years I ignored him for two years because I accomplished everything in this dance that could be done at the time that I did it. And little did I know that this culture, <clears throat> because of the expansion of it um, around the world and then the advent of the Internet and the influences thereof, a lot of the stories that were told about the dance became controversial because now people on the internet don't have to travel overseas to verify anything. These are posts online. Mm -hmm. Come to find out pop locking doesn't exist. What are you talking about? Now, I don't know anything about this because I've moved on. I don't have to prove myself. I'm already the original king of pop, so I never had to defend it. Mm -hmm. Everybody that saw me dance knows. Everybody agrees. You know, and it was it's a beautiful thing. And little did I know that what had happened is there's an argument whether even pop locking exists. Really? And when I hear this, Brother Arnold, I think this is frivolous. I think it's childish. I think that, you know, if somebody's arguing that it's simply because they don't know. Yeah. So I didn't pay it much mind. And I ignored this man for two years. And I think he wrote me one time and he asked me, I think, a question about, do I really know the impact that I have? Something to that effect. Huh. And, I, and I wanted to reach out to him. And as soon as I, I linked, I watched some of his videos and I said, OK, gang affiliated dude doing his thing. Mm -hmm. But I loved him because the character that he presented, almost like MC Hammer, is caricaturistic. Mm -hmm. Caricaturistic meaning Cool Boy could be a, a doll. It could be a superhero. The mm -hmm. way he presents yep. 
the dance and the way he promotes it. And I just thought that that was so unique and so artsy and so close to our culture, him being from Compton. And when we began to talk and build our bond, I was really, really glad that I did because I was able to clear up a lot of things because of who I am, mm -hmm. this culture, number one the term pop locking I don't think there's any argument anywhere anymore that it exists and I know damn sure not on your show nah, <laughs> we keep that shit alive here you know so <clears throat> it's just been a beautiful ride brother Arnold yeah and um, you know in 1981 it was really good because Lonzo my, my big brother yeah Shout who out. I love dearly who without him I don't think there would even be um, a furtherance of our culture because we wouldn't have the kickstand to stand on. Lonzo was like the kickstand for all of the ideas we could rest on him because he was one at the time, being so young, 21, 22 at the time. Mm -hmm. And even though we had all the other venues and promoters, Uncle Jam's Army and all the other things, they moved around. Lonzo was a staple. Eve After Dark on El Segundo and Avenon, you knew it was going to be there. Oh, yeah. You know, so him opening those doors for us gave us a place to not only express our art, but to set the stage for where we wanted to compete. You know, and we knew, you know, where it was going to be. Because, you know, you can go to a, uh, Uncle Jam's Army thing and it'd be in Carson one night. Mm hmm and then the next night it'd be somewhere in L.A. Because they moved around depending on where the venue was. Mm -hmm. But Compton, we had a spot. Eve After Dark. Yeah. Uh, with Captain Crunch and the Funky Bunch. My brothers, Charles Washington, Gary, uh, Steve, those brothers. Um, so many wonderful groups with talents, one Arm Bandit. Um, so many other groups were around at that time. And that's when the culture was alive because we knew we were making a difference. We didn't know that it was all over the world because we wouldn't have had any reason to think beyond, you know, our surroundings. We didn't have the Internet. Yeah. You know, um, Soul Train, we knew we could be on. You know, that was our ticket to the world, but there was no life for a dancer there was no tour for a dancer which is what influenced me to go into the air force you know when you you know you know you got to get out of compton by this time because your mama's telling you to mm -hmm. you're gonna leave here you know what it is <laughs> you're gonna leave here mm -hmm. i don't know where you're gonna go <laughs> <laughs> Like that saying, you don't so have you, to go home, but you got to get the hell out of here. You going to leave here. <laughs> uh, you know, and at the time, I thought she hated me. Rest in peace, mama. But I know. Thank you every day. Because one thing she embedded me, that embedded in me is that you were going to be gone. And I had to make decisions. So yeah. we all know in high school when the recruiters and you have senior day and career day and all of that and all the the recruiters and the whoever that's trying to get the next kid into their thing. They had the military there, and I looked at the uniforms first because, you know, I'm a, I'm in a young, impressionable kid that doesn't know, like any other kid, what I want to do with my life after high school. I am a pop locker. I am the king of pop, and that's what I know. 17, that's what I know. Mm -hmm. One thing about the Air Force recruiter, he said... I went to his booth. He said, what do you do? He didn't ask me what I wanted to do. It was really unique, his mm. approach to me. He said, what do you do? Interesting, okay. Right, you feel that? Yeah. He said, so what do you do? I said, I'm a dancer. Oh, you can dance in the Air Force. Mm. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, you got to be good. Oh, I am good. I'm the best. He said, oh, because good, you're going to have to compete. Oh, that's what I do. Oh, you ever heard of Tops in Blue? No, sir. Oh, man, you ever seen uh, 
the USO tour with Bob Hope. And at that time, you know, that was really big when right. I was a kid. Oh, Here, yeah. Bob was on TV with the military, and it's like, wow. Yeah, man, it's like that, only with the Air Force. Really? Yeah. I want to do that. Okay. I'm signing up. It was nothing. And I told everybody, I'm going to the Air Force because I'm going to Tops and Blue. Hmm. You know, and, you know, little did I know you have to go to basic training. And, and, <laughs> oh, you, know, you thought you were going to go straight and dance. Is... <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, I told, <laughs> told the dude I was a dancer, so <laughs> it wasn't no misunderstanding. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Except on my part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, oh, I, I, I didn't like that part of it. I didn't like the fact that it felt like I was tricked into it. So, overall, I think the military was a cool thing for me. I don't think it was a forever thing for me. So did you ever get and, to dance for Bob Hope? Or on the Bob Hope thing? Well, that was more Navy. Okay, but oh, he okay. used that as an example. Thompson oh. Blue is the same thing for the oh, Air Force. Oh, dang. Okay, the, gotcha, gotcha. When you watch that clip, the one that you have mm -hmm. of 1982, not only did I make Thompson Blue, that's the clip of Thompson Blue, I won first place in the world dance so when, when i say first place in the world i'm talking about this was american idol before american idol no shit right because here's how it goes everybody in the military every year there's a talent show and you are you you sign up under a category i signed up under dance so whatever base you're on and we know how many military bases there are around the world you compete on that base you have to win your category to compete in that what uh, civilians know as a region, what might be a command. You have to win there. Then you have to compete against all the commands, against all the winners of all the categories, and that's what that big event is. Black tie. It's a monster event, almost like the Oscars, bro. Nice, yeah. So when I won that, this is this is against the best dancers in the world at that time. So not only did I win, and the, the finals were held at Dayton, Ohio Convention Center, as you can see on the video tape. Mm -hmm. And back then, because things were analog, they only videotaped the winners. Okay. You follow me? Because tape cost money uh, back yeah, then. It oh, wasn't. Yeah age back then reels of tape cost money so unfortunately if you competed in tops and blue and you didn't make the finals and win you're not on any tape to be seen from 1982 so you see clearly not only i won my category but i won best okay. in show when i won best in show when they called my name, I promise you, Brother Arnold, I didn't even know what Best in Show was. I never heard of it before. <laughs> and when they told me after the show, they said the judges have deemed you the best act, period. That means out of all the singers, bands, oh, ventriloquists, dance groups, everything, because that dance at that time the way I moved, and you look at the way I move in that video, 1982, very hard to find movement like that, that sophisticated with this art form that we did do today called pop locking. To have that kind of precision, we didn't see it then because we didn't have all of those titles for names and moves and styles and all of that stuff that exists today. We just move it. Damn, what a dope time, man. I have one more yeah. question for you, and then um, I want to give you a chance to pump what you got coming up. I want to talk about your music, but um, one last question. We've mentioned it a few times tonight, King of Pop. Uh, tell us a story about how you are connected to Michael Jackson and that, that title. Well, <clears throat> this was before Michael Jackson. I mean, if you're right. my age, I'm, you know, it's before Michael Jackson. I grew up a fan of Michael Jackson, of course. We, we he was a couple of years older than me and so you know we, he's right in my wheelhouse music impact influence everything mm -hmm. um 
I wasn't a singer back then when I was a kid growing up, but I was always a dancer. We never compared ourselves to Michael Jackson because what he did was unique to him. Um, again, with the um, pop locking, because the dance was so close to gang culture, you know that we named ourselves. And our names were similar in fashion to uh, our gang style names, except now it's affiliated with what you do well with the dance. Mm -hmm. You know, if you couldn't pop good and you waved good, you didn't want to be popping Arnold. You didn't mm -hmm. want to be that shit. Yeah, yeah. you want to be like Aqua or something. Yeah, you better be Aqua uh, Liquid, some, yeah, yeah, Aqua Arnold. That's cool. <laughs> And like wave, that. so nobody's going to ever hold you accountable for having that hard-ass hit. Mm -hmm. But you're going to go up against cats that got that kind of wave or aqua movement, as we affectionately call it, mm -hmm. here on your show. You know, and so when it comes to, I, I got hardest hits and I can move, I can do it all. So I'm thinking of a name, like Animated Ant. And I'm like, hell no, that's so <laughs> whack. I'm like, not a lot of good stuff. Go and I said, Poppin' Ant. No, Poppin' Anthony. No, Poppin', Poppin' King. Poppin' King. That's my last name. Poppin' King. King Pop. King Pop. King Pop. And I told the group, I said, yeah, I'm going to be King Pop. And then when we went to go get our letters on our jacket, I said, put of in the middle of it. Okay, I said, dude, <laughs> King of Pop is kind of arrogant. <laughs> that's, that's about as arrogant as it gets. And I said, yeah, put the of in there then. He said, you're going to have to prove it. Make sure it's on everything. Make sure it's on every jacket. It's on every tie. It's on everything, everywhere I go. And anybody that wants it, I will gladly give it to you with a smile. Because this is the greatest gift on the planet. And it will be my joy to hand you your ass with a ribbon on it. <laughs> Love that. You dig, Brother Arnold? I'm digging, man. <laughs> So how did Michael Jackson end up like, uh, I guess, did, did he did he hear that name well, in the street? What's funny is, I, you know, I can't accuse Michael of anything, but we all know that, we all knew, especially from Compton, that mm -hmm. the term King of Pop had been being used since 1979. Mm -hmm. And the association, now mind you, in 1981, I'm gone because my version of touring is going to the Air Force to dance and compete. So mm -hmm. technically, I am on tour dancing mm -hmm. that's what i'm doing so i'm nowhere in the california scene as a matter of fact i'm outside of california as far as anchorage alaska Damn. meanwhile the scene picks up for a while and i, I heard uh, the cool boy interview that you all have done mm -hmm. great job by the way thank brother you. arnold you're thank a phenomenal you. host uh, thank you sir um with Boogaloo Shrimp, or about Boogaloo Shrimp, who was a protege of mine, who used to watch me dearly, with beautiful young kid who was very respectful and always watched, mm -hmm. always watched. So he's a little older than Cool Boy, but he's younger than me. So he wasn't, you know, he didn't jump in circles with with the big dogs mm -hmm. at that time. You know, um, I forgot why we even got on that. Oh no. Dude. Yeah, uh, let's see. We were talking about Cool Boy, and then <clears throat> it's all. Oh, you you said you watched the show uh, between uh, Cool Boy and uh, Boogaloo Shrimp. Maybe you're gonna touch yeah. on the origin. I, I, I forgot. It's all good. It. Don't even worry about it. But we were talking about Michael Jackson. Right. That's it. Mm -hmm. Him. There we go. Um, so around that time, you know, the scene had picked up. You know, then the movies breaking and all of these things, and Michael. Um. In 79, he had the Off the Wall album. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm privy to know certain things because, you know, later on I go on to be in the record business because I was always a musician. I wasn't a singer, but I am now. And we were signed. Uh, Larkin Arnold was 
prominent figure in the music business who I was signed to also signed Michael Jackson to CBS. And I was privy to the stories because Michael's biggest thing is that he wanted to cross over. He didn't just want to be a soul artist. It was important to him to, to, to reach the entire world. Um, that, that was his passion. That's why he wanted to leave the Jacksons, all of that. So Off the Wall sold about 5 million records at that time. At that point, it gave him leeway to do whatever he wanted to do. So we know the next album is a thriller album. Thriller, yeah. Right? And this is some six years later. Right, this or four four years later or so, eighty three, eighty four, and in those videos, like uh, Beat It and uh, a few other videos, you see the connection uh, to popping. Mm -hmm. Call it popping because you see Pete and a host of others with their influence on Michael Jackson with the dance. And then when he did Motown 24 in 1984, mm -hmm. the biggest thing about his performance wasn't the song. It was when he broke out into the into the moonwalk, because right? Word on the street is he's going to do the moonwalk, mm -hmm. which we know was backslide. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm in Alaska at this time. By this time, he starts calling himself the king of pop. Mm -hmm. Now, the idea is that's affiliated with pop music and we'll roll with that, but he's also affiliated with popping. So that's where the that's where the, the rub came in. Popping like pop like how, bro? Where you get that from? And we see we see the connection because you're with poppers. Now if you've never been with poppers, if you never talked about the moonwalk then maybe King of Pop is a coincidence. Mm. Oh, no. We're not mad on the street because we from Compton. We we always love what's, you know, what's, you know, at the core, real. And Michael Jackson, we know and love already. So mm. even though we knew it wasn't the moonwalk, you knew it wasn't the moonwalk, Brother Arnold. You knew it was backslide. Yeah. You knew he wasn't the first one that created it. We didn't care because this was a portal for all of us that Michael was carrying, even though I knew it was my name. I was proud that it was my name and it was Michael Jackson. Yeah, yeah the number one entertainer of all time. I was proud that, to see him on television doing what he did and that the world screamed about it because we'd never seen anything like it on that stage. Of course, we got a chance to see Electric Boogaloo's on Soul Train, which we loved. Mm -hmm. But Michael Jackson was Michael Jackson. He had a lane that represented all of us. So we respected him for using the name. I've always respected it, and it's always been a talking point for me. You know, to augment what it is that I've done in this culture, and respectfully so, because I'm respected for it. So, I, 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 I honorably share the title and use in front of it the original one. Nice. Now we have a couple minutes left. I want to um, give you a chance to promote your music. I know you're you've been uh, doing that for a minute now. Talk to me about that, and uh, where can we find you? And yeah, all that good stuff. AnthonyAKKing.com. 